These days I run my studio out of a barn on a Christmas tree farm in rural Oregon. It's a different pace of life than I had in New York, that's for sure. They also restore old wooden boats here. So gorgeous, look at this. There's so many cool things to bang on in here. It's not too remote, but there is a family of mountain lions living across the road, which makes it a little unnerving to work here at night. I spent my youth touring as a rock guitarist. I hit this point in my mid-twenties when all the instruments, well, in fact, anything in the world that can make a sound at all, became my instrument. And then there was this process of figuring out what weird, cool stuff I could do with every instrument. What happens if I hit the piano like this? What happens when you hit a guitar with pencils? I was especially drawn to tuned glass because it's both pure and dirty sounding. And you can do all these unusual things with it. I've been playing glass for over a decade, tons of film scores, and I feel like I'm discovering new textures all the time. I've collected boxes and boxes of glass from all over the country. Like, look at these. Look at this guy. So gorgeous. God, I could talk about glass all day. I split my time as a composer between experimental art music, films, commissions for theater, dance, classical music, gallery installations. I also get called in to do outside-the-box scores for brands and we're looking to create something unique, different. I love electronic music, but only if it's an otherworldly extension of organic sounds. And only if it makes me notice the world. The trees and the sky. The quality of the air and the light around me. The way that I'm breathing and feel human within it. I collect and manipulate sounds everywhere I travel. I'm always looking for something new. Even when I'm working on orchestral scores, I'm peppering them with odd instruments or electronic instruments that I create from scratch. It's so important to make new things, to make your own things, to discover. I think it's important to climb, climb new mountains, to climb your own mountain. Sometimes I feel like if I could, I would just make music out in the wilderness just for the few people or animals who happen to come along. The most important thing when composing for film is to tell the story, of course. But it's equally important to build a world. Like, what's unique about the world of these characters? What's the fingerprint that makes this story its own story? Music can carve out a whole other space within a film. It can anchor the story to itself and make it more like itself than it is like something else. I'm always trying to find that thing, the one thing that makes the world of the film itself unique. When you're scoring a film, every sound and every choice has two meanings. There are the notes, of course, you know, the emotional meaning in the chords and the music, but there's also a cultural meaning in every gesture. You're playing cultural references as much as you're playing chords. Every sound has a meaning that anchors it to something in culture, even if it's a new sound that no one has heard before. I love working with directors because 90% of the time their understanding of how music operates culturally is so well honed. They get music culturally on a gut level. They have a deep intuition with it. And they speak about music in terms that are usually more poetic than musical. It's an honor to try to translate that into sound. 
I spent much of my time riding that fine line between discovering new sounds and then playing with those cultural touchstones that people find so familiar. No matter what medium you're using, art, it's really about ideas. And when you find the right word or image or the right sound, the work you're making becomes a swifter, straighter arrow. And then the thing that hits home, the thing that people remember, is the idea. (laughs) 